Now that the United Nations have delivered Europe from the Nazis, two of our three enemies lie among the ruins of their own evil ambitions. We have come far along the road since those early perilous days that shook the world. I salute the members of the armed forces of the United States for courage and complete devotion to duty throughout the African and European campaigns. I salute the men in uniform ashore, afloat, or aloft in the vast Pacific and in India, China, and Burma. For the fact is that we have been fighting not two wars, but one global war. A global war in which, at the darkest hour, our Axis enemies were striking eastwards and westwards, halfway across the world, and threatened to join forces in the Middle East, thus isolating China and Russia. Had that effort been successful, the combined strength of the Axis coalition could then have been directed at the destruction of the free nations of the world, one by one. We had therefore to consider the possibility that after the conquest of Asia, Africa, in Europe. Germany might engulf the British Isles and that she might then join with Japan in attacks on our coastal cities and industries. By that time we would have been fighting alone and virtually surrounded. The outlook was serious and a grave decision had to be made. Therefore our strategy was first to prevent at all costs the junction of Germany and Japan and second to crush them one at a time. We had to destroy the Nazis first because until the great industries of our country could perform the modern miracle of building sufficient ships for all-out war, it was necessary to choose the considerably shorter supply routes to European theaters in preference to the longer sea lanes of the Pacific. Furthermore, to have undertaken an early offensive against Japan would have required large naval forces the treacherous attack on Pearl Harbor had so damaged our fleet as to render us unable to assume that offensive. The naval building program would need at least two years to complete. We simply couldn't wait that long. In Europe, we had hard-fighting allies already at grips with the enemy. We had bases from which to launch our fast-growing air power. But in the Pacific, we had no air bases near Japan and no strong allies, however brave. But most important of all, America immediately had to commit its major forces to the European theater because at that time, the Axis partners had Russia and Britain on the ropes. If we had concentrated on Japan and defeated it, we then might have been confronted with a Germany that either had defeated Russia and Britain or at the very least had become so strong as to be almost impregnable to our delayed attack. Particularly if the enemy had gained possession of the British and French fleets, we then would have faced long years of constant wars. Thus, we made the choice. Hold in the Pacific, attack in Europe. First, we would attack Germany from the air. Then we would invade Europe and destroy the German armies. True with our allies, we won the Battle of Europe. But without the heroism and sacrifice of our Pacific naval, air, and ground forces under splendid leadership, the success that now shines upon our banners in Europe would not have been possible. Our Pacific troops fought and held back a savage foe so that we might concentrate the full fury of our offensive power against Nazi Germany. And then as we gathered strength in the Pacific, they have closed in on the enemy, destroying his ships and planes in preparation for the final kill. We have won the Battle of Europe. global war will not be won until we have exterminated Japanese military power. The Japanese of Pearl Harbor, Bataan, Corregidor, and Malaysia. And Japan committed to 100 years of war and sacrifice if necessary. 
we are prepared to lose 10 million lives in our war with America. Did Japan committed to world domination or to death? A Japan whose home front is fanatically united behind the enemy's war effort. Now, together with our allies, we shall concentrate devastating power against this treacherous enemy and rid the world permanently of this menace of barbarism. We can do this if every American, in or out of uniform, keeps in heart and mind the plain fact that we will not have won this war, nor can we enjoy any peace until Japan is completely crushed. Two down and one to go.